So let's go over a bit of bone biology. Our skeleton provides our body support, structure and protects our vital organs. But apart from this, it also has multiple other purposes and is a living dynamic tissue, which when we are young is constantly growing. And even after we become adults and they stop growing, the bone tissue is still continuously being renewed in a process called remodeling. Your bones have living cells on it and within it, has its own blood supply, produces blood cells, and also acts as a mineral store for calcium and phosphorus, which are vital minerals used in other important biological processes within your body. It takes about 10 years for all the bone in your body to be renewed, and paying attention to bone health is important in adults as well as growing children. Your bones are made of 90% collagen, which is a protein used to form connective tissue, including skin, and the collagen gives your bone flexibility behind its strength. The remaining 10% is made of the minerals calcium and phosphate in the form of hydroxyapatite, which gives the bone its hardness. The outer shell of the bone is dense, solid, compact bone, but the inside of the bone is less dense. Where within the vertebrae and the ends of long bones, the structure of the bone tissue is this delicate honeycomb-like matrix, which is known as trabecular or spongy bone. And within all the little nooks and crannies of the trabecular matrix houses stem cells, which produce blood cells as well as other body tissue, including none other than the osteoclasts and osteoblasts. The honeycomb structure of trabecular bone is often referred to as microarchitecture and enables the bone to be lighter whilst still providing strength but is also often the site of osteoporotic fractures when bone density falls below critical levels. To keep things simple, I'm only going to be talking about trabecular bone, the role of the mineral calcium and the bone cells involved in bone growth and remodeling. Let's talk about calcium homeostasis. Calcium is the most abundant mineral in the body. Everyone knows calcium makes up much of the structure of bones and teeth, and makes bone and teeth hard and strong. There's also a small ionized pool of calcium in the circulatory system, extracellular fluid, and various tissues where it has a role in critical functions, including blood vessel contraction and dilation, muscle function, blood clotting, nerve transmission, and hormonal secretion. The levels of free calcium in the body is tightly regulated, and whenever calcium levels drop, this is sensed by the parathyroid glands, which release parathyroid hormone in a continuous manner in order to raise blood calcium levels back to normal. And there are three mechanisms by which it does this. Reabsorption of calcium and phosphate, which would otherwise have been secreted via the kidneys, enhanced absorption of calcium from the gut, and releasing calcium from the bones. To release calcium from bone, small amounts of bone needs to be broken down, and this process is called resorption. And this regulation of free calcium levels is called calcium homeostasis. Any bone which has been, re been removed by a resorption is then later replaced by new bone, and this process is bone remodeling, and the bone undergoes continuous remodeling. Bone remodeling is required to change bone size during growth, repair damage, and maintain serum calcium levels, as well as other minerals. The amount of bone removed is generally replaced by equal amounts of new bone. Your body is not able to make calcium and needs to be attained through the diet. I'm only going to touch on dietary requirements for bone health because it's kind of beyond the scope uh, of this video and also diet is highly personal to each person, but I will say that most references automatically say dairy and dairy products contain the most calcium, which 
isn't helpful for the large proportion of people who are naturally lactose intolerant. So I've included some non-dairy sources of calcium on this slide. As well as calcium, you need vitamin D, which is a hormone that helps absorb dietary calcium. And the best source of this is from the sun, but there are supplements for people who require it. And in addition, you need to have a healthy, balanced diet appropriate for you and also do appropriate bone strengthening exercises. Just wanted to emphasize that it's not just calcium, it's a combination of all these requirements that are needed for bone health.